My name is Miles Carter. I live in the town of Tonawanda. I don't live in the city of Buffalo. My mosque is over on Genesee Street. First, I would like to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, it's kind of surprising that unfortunately our country is going through the type of times that it's going through today. On a national level, we have rhetoric that means to hurt and drive our country into a place of chaos. On a local level, we have individuals acting in the streets that are carrying out that rhetoric. And I'm not talking about my black brothers and sisters acting out in the streets. I'm talking about our law enforcement attacking protesters continuously. What happened to me is not an isolated incident. A lot of you probably attended the conference that was held by Mayor Brown on Tuesday following my arrest. Mayor Brown made accusations that I was being watched by the police officers prior to being tackled because I was identified as an agitator in the crowd. Now, part of my statement that they want me to release to you guys, and when I say they, I mean the, the attorneys that I've retained. I had to retain attorneys because the city of Buffalo decided to charge me with two crimes while I was conducting a peaceful protest. Two. One of those crimes is a misdemeanor. In this prepared statement that I'm supposed to read out to you guys, I'm supposed to let you know that my name is Miles Carter. I'm a father of five. I'm from Western New York, despite the rhetoric from any police officers or the mayor himself. I grew up in Buffalo. I graduated from Amherst High School. I went to Madai College. I am a resident of this community. I work in Buffalo almost every single day of my life. Three years ago, two years ago, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but I met quite a few press individuals in this park for a different press conference. We recorded a video here when we were raising $120,000 to build a playground because the city has let this neighborhood go to waste. I have to stop for a moment because I'm told if I act angry, which I should be, that you guys are gonna paint me in a negative light. If I act angry because I was maliciously tackled by the police during a peaceful protest, I might look like the bad guy. That's the country we live in. And I have privilege. I'm half white. I grew up in the suburbs. I speak your language. That's why you're here today because of the outcry of support of my Caucasian friends. The incident that happened to me on Monday has been shared in Denver, 
California, Florida, Texas, Puerto Rico, Europe, Canada. Not because the world is outraged that they saw a black man being tackled on camera. I think that's only part of it. But because of the team of people I have behind me that are willing to push my message. Not every black person in Buffalo, Minneapolis, Tampa, Dallas has that privilege. The rhetoric that came about the protests that was happening on Monday, I think you guys are gonna find large in part is inaccurate. I think you'll find that the police leadership of this city was twisting the details of what occurred to make it seem as though their officers were acting in the right, under proper guidance. But Channel 4 caught it on video. Facebook Live caught it on video. We were a group of protesters. We weren't throwing bottles. We weren't burning garbage cans. We didn't break a curfew. And there's several officers out there that are spreading that rhetoric that we were breaking curfew. That is a lie. We were peacefully protesting in the streets of Buffalo where my black brothers and sisters experience police brutality just like every other black person in this country. And if you haven't experienced it yourself as black people, then you're only one degree of separation from someone who has. Yeah, I went to Madai College, I got my degree. I moved out of the city, I have a house in the suburbs. I'm comfortable where I'm at. But I didn't forget where I came from or who I came from. My goal every day in this city is to make the lives and the livelihoods of the individuals living here better. Black, white, Hispanic, it really doesn't matter to me because I care about people. But I will say this because it's important for you guys to understand this, that black lives do matter. The charges that the Buffalo Police Department have brought against me are bullshit. I'm calling for Mayor Brown, the district attorney, to recognize that, to stop spinning your rhetoric, to admit that you made a mistake. Because looking at the news, being at the protests, you guys are continually making mistakes. How old was the man that got pushed over by the police yesterday? And he was white. 75 years old. Sustained serious injuries. Not only did the, the police officers push him over, how many police officers walked over him as he was laying on the ground? So yeah, you suspend the police officers that pushed him. A graphic video of police shoving a 75-year-old man to the ground in Buffalo, New York Thursday quickly went viral and drew wide condemnation on social media. It shows the majority of the officers there march past after the man falls. The man is then seen bleeding from his ears. Two officers have been suspended without pay within hours of the video being posted by a reporter from local public radio station WBFO.
The station reported that later, two medics came forward and helped the man into an ambulance. Police initially issued a statement saying the man was injured after tripping and falling. The but what about the ones that failed to act responsibly as they're supposed to do? They want me to bring a civil suit against the officers that tackled me into the ground. What about the officers that stood there and let it happen? All over this country, law enforcement is taking it into their own hands to show solidarity and recognize and recognize that police brutality is a problem in this country. Law enforcement is taking it into their own hands to recognize that. You can see it in Lockport, where the police department took a knee to show solidarity with their protesters. Buffalo quickly caught on. After a week of beating the shit out of their protesters, they took a knee yesterday. Thank you for that show of solidarity to those police officers that did that. I will also say, and I was advised not to talk about this because they don't want you guys to misconstrue the two events that happened when I was arrested. When the Buffalo police officers and the New York state troopers, because it was a combination of both, under Andrew Cuomo, who sides with the protesters, he definitely sent his army out. And Mayor Byron Brown, who was black, we don't need to remind you how your privilege kept your son out of trouble. And I'm not here to tear down black people because that's not what we're about. I'm here to show you the Buffalo police officers acted negligently. The state troopers acted negligently. They fired tear gas into a crowd of peaceful protesters along with cars that were parked on Bailey Avenue and sitting there waiting for the protest to end. I think that you guys will soon find out that the rhetoric and the story that the Buffalo police and Mayor Brown is spinning about the accident may not add up entirely. That young woman is being charged with two counts of aggravated assault. Police officers fired tear gas at her vehicle and shot at it. Rubber bullets, round, live ammunition, it doesn't matter. When you're in a car, leaving a funeral, going home or wherever it is that you're going. I think we'll find out that wasn't a vengeful act of aggression by a protester. It was an accident caused by the negligence of the Buffalo Police Department and the New York State Troopers. If you guys can't control yourselves and act with proper conduct when it comes to your communities and your people, then the people should be in the streets demanding that you're gone. The people should be in the streets demanding that you're gone. It should be an outrage that the city of Buffalo spends one third of their budget on the Buffalo Police Department. And this is how they are policing our people in our communities. At what point did a representative come out and speak to peaceful protesters? Are you gonna tell me because we were yelling that that caused a problem? I'm sorry, do black people yelling scare you? Because last time I checked, there's quite a bit for us to yell about. We've taken knees. We've protested peacefully.
We gave Martin Luther King a holiday. And my people are still being beaten and murdered in the streets of this country and in this city. Quentin Suttles. That's who we were protesting for. We were bringing light to the issue that it happens here in Buffalo too. You guys still think we were out here protesting about George Floyd. That's only one piece of it. You think we're just jumping on the first trend that comes our way? No, we live this every day. And for those that don't know how to protest, those that don't know how to change stuff in our city, and I'm not claiming to be an expert because I've been asking for a crosswalk across the street from my children's school for four years, and I still don't have it. This community still doesn't have it. We asked for nicer lights to deter crime. We didn't ask for the police to come in here and beat people and arrest them. We asked for the landlords, the slum lords, Muslim and non-Muslim, I will say it, that they're held accountable for the filth that they are maintaining for the people of our city to live in. It is disgusting. But you send out an entire army to, collect, to protect a police precinct that we paid for. Three weeks ago, there was a fight across the street from that police precinct. How long did it take for the police to show up? I saw it on Facebook, and if you haven't, ask your kids. They'll show it to you. The police precinct was 30 feet away. That fight went on for a very long time. But God forbid somebody tries to break a glass window Somebody tries to spray paint a brick building. We will bring out the force of the United States to deter that violence, to deter that crime. This whole country is going through a lot of problems right now. That young man that was arrested for allegedly throwing the firebox through the window at City Hall, they're trying to put him underneath the jail. How many lives were lost because of the firebox that he threw? Zero. But you want to take his life away because you want to make a statement to black people that you're not gonna stand for this. But yet we have to stand for you. Beating us, killing us. He threw a box through a window. I'm calling Mayor Brown to do the responsible thing as a black man in this community and get that young boy out of jail. Bring him to me. We will raise the money to get him the psychiatric evaluations and treatment he needs to make sure he doesn't go through this again. And we will make sure that we save a black life instead of destroy it. That young woman that's being charged with hitting the police officers, I would really like for you reporters to go find her and listen to her story. Because they're trying to keep things under wraps so they can justify the violence that's being used against the peaceful protesters here in Buffalo, I was an agitator. It's a great soundbite. I was an agitator. Ask these people standing behind me how long they've known me and how much I've agitated them. If you want real change in this community, if you want things to be different, let's start by removing this narrative that there's such thing as a blue life.
because that's divisive. You can't give me a black officer with a blue suit on and tell me I still got a black officer because he's a blue life. Give me some community officers that are willing to walk these streets and work with these people and build relationships in their community that are from this community. Maybe then we can start effectuating some change around here. I'm 30 years old. I've lived here my entire life with the exception of a couple years. Buffalo has been just as segregated, just as brutal. The suburbs of Buffalo, because this isn't just about city of Buffalo police officers. You cannot be black and drive through Amherst or Tonawanda. I said it because I live there. I live right next to Niagara Falls Boulevard. I watch Tonawanda and Amherst police officers put three patrol cars behind a black person every time they pull them over for intimidation. Letting us know where our community is not at. Y'all think Buffalo doesn't have problems. Y'all think we're looking at George Floyd. Buffalo, you got problems. That's the truth. My sister was shot in the chest with rubber bullets. 21 years old, peacefully protesting, bruises all over her chest. My brother, shot with rubber bullets, bruises all over his legs. Who would have thought that tear gas would be something I can identify by taste now? But that's the America we live in. That's black America. And that's what we deal with every day. And for the Muslim community, I've come to your fundraisers for Yemen. I supported you for Yemen. I was in an outcry with you for Kashmir. I want the Muslims in China to be liberated from the oppression of the Chinese government too. Your black brothers and sisters are here in the streets of America at home being mistreated, being abused, being beaten, being murdered by their police officers. You can justify a revolution in Syria over one dead kid. You can justify a revolution in Syria over one dead kid. May God give him the highest heights of paradise. On June 1st of 2020, I attended a protest at Bailey Avenue near E District to exercise my fundamental right to peacefully protest. My fundamental right to peacefully protest. It was clear by the presence of police tanks because that's what met our people on the streets. Police tanks. Guns, batons, dogs, 1960s style, right here in Buffalo. Under the command of a black mayor. I will remind you that. It was clear that the city of Buffalo, along with the state of New York, intended to meet our peaceful efforts with force. Regardless, the protesters communicated our message in a peaceful, non-threatening means. Let me be clear, because there's Facebook videos out there. We were very non-threatening. And I will say this again, we were very non-threatening. 
If me yelling at a camera threatens you, you've got a problem, America. Because my brothers and sisters are being killed. My sons and daughters are being killed. My fathers and mothers are being killed. So if me yelling at a camera bothers you, you have a problem. During the protest, I had an opportunity to participate in an interview with who I believe was Channel 4 News. As I was conducting my interview with Channel 4 News, with my hands in the air, my back was to the police. Without warning, the police officers deployed tear gas. They rushed the crowd of protesters with their batons, with their dogs, and with their rubber bullets. And this is a good time to pause because again, I have a little bit of privilege. So when I get that, I get to stop and speak on it. Yesterday, I was picked up by one of my friends as a Buffalo police officer and taken home in a nice ride. It was a friendly ride. We are friends. He explained to me that waving the baton and bringing the dogs out, that that is just a tactic that's used to clear the way. That's great. Did you think of asking us? And if we said no, were you gonna shoot us? What is this, Tiananmen Square? As I was conducting my interview with Channel 4 News, with my hands in the air and my back was to the police, several officers without warning rushed towards me and tackled me to the ground. The police officers zip tied my hands behind my back. I would imagine much similar to what was done to Saddam Hussein or Osama bin Laden. They zip tied my hands behind my back as if I was some type of terrorist in the streets of Buffalo, the city that I help. I try to help as much as I can every day. I was not provided with any reason on why I was being arrested until I arrived in the police precinct. They had to decide what charges to give me. When the lieutenant came in to speak to me, a Caucasian lieutenant who stood in the precinct while he commanded officers to attack black people on the streets, when he came in to speak to me, not only did he tell me I talk too much, because I do, He told me they had to go figure out what they were going to charge me with. I later learned that I was charged with disorderly conduct and obstruction of governmental administration in the second degree. The charges against me are baseless and bullshit. And I did not break the law in any way. I did not break the law in any way. I did not break a curfew. I was peacefully protest, pre protesting, exercising my First Amendment right to protest and attempted to participate in a media interview and nothing else. The Buffalo police and New York State troopers unlawfully arrested me, used excessive force to detain me, and trampled on my civil rights as an American citizen. Those rights that are guaranteed to every man, woman, and child that is born in this country. And I was born at Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital. Check the records. I will continue to advocate to end police brutality. I will not allow the assault on me and my civil rights by law enforcement to deter me from organizing and ensuring that black lives do matter. And if you're a black life anywhere in Western New York, you come straight down to 1955 Genesee Street. If you want to learn how to organize, come meet me. If you're not registered to vote, bring your ass down and get registered to vote. I will show you how to do it. If you don't have your GED, we'll help you get that. 
If you need to apply for food stamps because you're hungry and your kids can't eat, we will help you do that. Because that's what we do. I want to thank everyone for the outpouring of support I have received since this incident. And I truly do mean that. People all over the world have been showing support, have been showing solidarity. And I will remind you again, I am one person in Buffalo. The reason we were out there was for Quentin Suttles. To bring justice to the fact that he was beaten in his head during a traffic stop. I'd prefer just to get a ticket. After the arrest, my local mosque started a launch good campaign to support me and other protesters that have been harmed and wrongfully arrested. And we will use that money to help our people. You tell me what the cost is to fly a helicopter over the city of Buffalo for six days in a row, policing your people. Where the hell is our community center at? How much did that helicopter cost? How much are you paying the pilot per hour to fly it? Making it look like we live in Iraq. Right here in America. How much does it cost? And you talk to me about funding to provide a proper playground for the children that play in this community. But you can fly a helicopter over their heads day in and day out and police them. Y'all are out your mind. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. I'm